Hello, um, I just want to present uh, our lab here uh, shortly, mainly because I think there is a big need and um, we have become do-it-yourselfers and makers because uh, there were no facilities and I think uh, economic affairs and uh, tech shop can do us a big service uh, and uh, make us spend a lot less money than we do now developing our stuff. Uh, yours uh, developed this uh, radiator uh, seven, eight years ago and he was still uh, a designer, a classical designer. Uh, his work was produced by Yaga, a company that took care of the production and the sales afterwards. And this went great. Uh, it's still in production. It's still for sale. And we get a whopping 2% of all the sales. So we figured maybe this is not exactly what we need. Uh, and we started making more experimental things. Um, Yours made the bone chair. Maybe some of you people know this already. It's uh, based on a software that uh, calculates what kind of uh, bone structure would be most efficient to support the weight of a person at a certain location. And we applied this uh, to a chair. And we started noticing that if you start making stuff like this, um, there is actually no one that can make it or willing to make it. So we have to make it ourselves. And we found out that this is exactly what we like to do. This is the end result. Um, we still do this uh, now, but one of the problems we have is uh, this is actually a 3D printed mold. We cast completely full with uh, plastic. It is. Nobody wanted to make this chair, and the people that did want to make this chair for a lot of money uh, didn't look very capable. Uh, this doesn't look like much, but we found out that with a little bit of um, farmer's wisdom, you get uh, quite far. And um, this is how they uh, end up. And we have a big factory at the moment, a lot of people working there. I think we produced about a hundred of these pieces already. Um, so it's big and uh, we're, we're growing all the time because every time we want to make something new, we have to buy the machine, we have to sort of hire people that are uh, capable to, uh, to handle the machine and everything like that. And we're actually not really into that. We, we still want to design a lot of stuff, but we don't necessarily want to run a big corporation. It's, um, it's my job, so I'm actually uh, undermining my own position a little bit. But I'm, um, I'm really happy that this maker movement is starting to uh, evolve now. Uh, we, we made a piece of uh, digital production. Uh, here you see uh, self-assembling pieces. They're getting smaller and smaller. So in, these are intelligent building blocks. They can assemble and reassemble themselves. So this will be the future, we think. And we try to make this visual in a large piece, which a robot eventually built and we showed that you can build it with relatively big blocks, but that in the end, the blocks are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So you will have a very small pixel, which uh, looks just like uh, products today, and you can rebuild and remodel it. Going a little bit fast, I notice. Um, so here's uh, what we think uh, should happen in Amsterdam with the maker movement. Uh, as you see, all the products we make, uh, they're they're highly uh, technical, a lot of skilled work is needed, but also a lot of machines and uh, a lot of uh, skilled people. And we don't think uh, there is enough of this in Amsterdam. Um, this is generally what I think you need to make a, an ID uh, work. I think many of these things already passed uh, in, the, in the last uh, couple hours. Um, and what we're looking for is um, a standardization of all the tools that, that you actually always need if you want to make something that we make or what, whatever you want to make yourself. And we think uh, the, the government of Amsterdam can do something here uh, by facilitating, not giving money, just making it easier for makers to actually get a space, um, get funding ready to you and all things like that. So here's some uh, international solutions already. Um, I think that these are great examples and um, we can learn a lot. But 
we need this stuff local. It's good because I think uh, in Amsterdam uh, you have this culture already. We're here with the 70 people. I think Raimo uh, uh, organized everybody in, in two or three weeks. So that's, that it shows that there is a really a good movement already. And the, the movement itself is already ready for this. Uh, it's bottom-up, inclusive, welcome to change and innovation, and fueled by local initiatives. These initiatives, uh, they will come up, borrow up, uh, and uh, make this movement go uh, uh, by itself, almost, I think. Uh, we really need uh, the economic affairs and tech shop to come together and uh, show us. So I set up the tech shop for the next, uh, <laughs> the next uh, speaker a lot, and uh, I hope... Uh, you can make everybody re-enthusiastic. Cool. Thanks.